what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overload here we're gonna be talking about several different horror topics in this video here today we'll be talking about predator badlands we'll be talking about freddy versus jason versus ash we'll be talking about scream 7 and we'll be talking about jurassic world rebirth so starting off here with predator badlands dan trachtenberg gave an interesting disclosure to empire magazine recently about predator badlands he said the creature is front and center center leading the charge He's still badass, but there's something there that touches you emotionally too. Creating a character you connect with but are also super intimidated by has been challenging but exciting. Elle Fanning was also confirmed for those dual roles I've talked about in the past, playing these siblings, one who seems to be created in a lab or something like that. As for the Yauja leading, the only way I see this working is if the film bounces back and forth from the humans to the predator like never before, but the comments really did surprise me the yauja leading the story does have potential but like i stated i would imagine you you're gonna have to find some sort of balance between the human lead and the yauja it's not just gonna be the yauja and then l fanning's characters are gonna just be in the background while we see the yauja hunting them I would imagine it's gonna just bounce back and forth between the two because your audience is more than likely gonna wanna spend most of their time connecting with the human characters. Not to say that the humans are the good characters in this case, maybe that's the twist. Maybe Elle Fanning's characters are actually deserving of being killed and we'll be rooting for the Alja. But we'll see what comes of this. But that was a pretty interesting disclosure for him to give to Empire Magazine. Uh, we also know that he has the animated film from Disney coming out too that's also a Predator movie sometime next year cannot wait to see all of that now let's talk about Freddy versus Jason versus Ash so Bruce Campbell explained why this film did not move forward beyond just being an idea this was covered in a Fangoria article from a podcast he recently was on giving these comments he had this to say they do Jason versus Freddy. They do that. They go, how about Jason versus Freddy versus Ash? Won't that be great? So we started out pretty immediately being like, yeah, won't that be fantastic? Ash can finally kill both of those assholes. Let's just get it done. Long pause, long pause. Um, You can't affect anything that happens to either of the other characters. You cannot kill either of them. You can't even determine what really happens in the fights. So it's going to be like fight by committee. Ash is the only good guy of all these horror series. Yeah, so he needs to kill them. He would need to kill them even if their eyes pop open at the very end and they cut to the credits like they normally do. Creatively, it was bankrupt and now you're sharing nothing with three other parties, two other franchises. You think they want to play nice? No, we all said no. It was very quick. Why would we do this to make Ash look like he's ineffective? I get where he's coming from. But of course, I also understand where the studios are coming from. So it just didn't go beyond that idea. Now, I think there's all those comic books that are out there. There's storyboard arts that I've seen throughout my childhood. This movie was just the talk of the town at one point in my childhood. Not that it was this big thing online. I mean, it could have been, but... I remember going to school, everyone was talking about Freddy vs. Jason vs. Ash, Freddy vs. Jason 2, and it just never materialized into anything, and it's unfortunate that it seems like from what a lot of you guys were leaving in my comment section when I shared this, I agree, it seemed like egos got in the way of this. This could have been something special, it's unfortunate it didn't happen. The original Freddy vs. Jason is still something special. I hope, wish, and pray that one day we get another crossover between two established horror icons that make everyone flock to the theater the way i'm sure it did in 2003 because i don't really see chucky versus megan having that same impact chucky is a long-standing icon while megan just got here it'd be nice to see someone else built up over the course of many decades then they cross over into a into a uh, battle like freddie and jason did so let's talk about scream seven Scream 7 has two cast members that have now been confirmed. We have Isabel May starring as Sydney's daughter and Courtney Cox that's back as Gail Weathers. Isabel May, of course, being the highlight here. I did a video talking about how she was in talks and how if it's confirmed later on in the day by the trades, that's how we know, of course, it's official. And that's exactly what ended up happening. And yes, for those who pointed it out, this all transpired on the eve of Melissa Barrera's firing. So that's what's really ironic here. 
I'm disappointed that I didn't see this coming, but a few of you did DM me and say you actually did see it coming. So kudos to you for that. I wish you would have let me know because then that would have gave me something to actually be on top of. I didn't see it coming until it actually got sent to me that we would be getting news on the eve of her firing. And then it kind of went. Then I started thinking, wait a minute, how close are we to the to the eve or anniversary of them firing her? And then they started putting this news out. Whatever. Isabel May starring as Sydney's daughter. I would have preferred McKenna Grace, but Isabel May, like I stated in what I saw of her in those Yellowstone prequel shows, she seemed to be quite the quite the talent for them to get. Courtney Cox back as Gail Weathers, not too shocking, uh, but all of this was reported by Deadline last night, and I can say that I've heard we're supposed to get more news today cast-wise, so we'll see what comes of that. And again, it looks like what they're trying to do is drown out whatever could have been done online by the fandom. I've been hearing that Spyglass does not like the online fandom, and I can understand why they don't, but it, it seems very petty <laughs> on their part. It, it is petty. Not, it doesn't seem that. It, it just is petty. I wish Isabel May all the best when it comes to Scream 7. As far as her social media prospects, when I looked her up, she doesn't have Instagram. Well, she has an Instagram. It's just it's it's dead. She doesn't have Twitter. So she's very much so like Mikey Madison's. She can't be bothered. She is going to use this to build a bigger platform for herself as she should. And she looks like she is going to give us one of the greatest performances we've ever seen in the screen franchise. Just going off of my memory of what I saw of her in Yellowstone. But let's now dive into talking about Jurassic World Rebirth. So Scarlett Johansson, we know is going to be starring in this film as covert operations expert Zora Bennett we got our first look at this character and this image was released sometime last week I think the film is supposed to be dropping on July 2nd 2025 this action-packed new chapter sees an intrepid team racing to secure DNA samples from the three most colossal creatures across land sea and air this is set five years after Jurassic World Dominion nice picture all I can, can say about this, this movie is be better than Dominion. Dominion had no business going down the creative path that it went. How do you set up something like what you did in Fallen Kingdom? And then we focus on obtuse, not obtuse, but def manipulated or what, what were they like engineered bugs, some type of morph bugs. It was just a weird angle to go with. So that was a waste of having the legacy stars back. So they don't need to come back for this one now that you're hopefully going to get it right. But this just needs to be better than Dominion. That's really all I can say about that. Nice image, like I stated. What do you guys think about all these updates? Let me know down in the comment section below. Before I get out of here, we actually got this first look at Megan 2.0 today, courtesy of Vanity Fair. And the image itself looks like, like I've been stating in that last Megan little update I did a few videos ago. Megan looks like she got her hair done. She looks like she is just thriving. We still haven't gotten that first look at the rumored second doll I've talked about, Amelia. And I trust that they're going to try to keep that as close to the chest right now as they can until a trailer drops. They might not even show it in the trailer as much as they might show it in the actual movie itself. They might have this planned as some sort of big twist, but it's just very odd. Well, it's not odd. It's, it's expected that they are trying to make it seem like Megan 2.0 is just going to be Megan back out there doing her thing. Megan is supposed to be turning babyface in this movie. There's supposed to be a second doll. And Megan is supposed to be defending defending Gemma and Katie this time around. So we'll see this slowly get confirmed over time. I, I trust my soulmate video. I'm still waiting for confirmation to come out about that project with those details I've shared. So we'll see what comes of this. Let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you go ahead and subscribe. Turn on post notifications so you never miss a video. In the description, I have links on my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.